In this video, we're diving into the types of dialysis access. Dialysis access is essential for both hemodialysis and peritoneal dialysis. To give you a clearer picture, a healthy kidney has the ability to filter approximately 1,200 to 1,500 milliliters of blood every minute. Hemodialysis aims to replicate this function by filtering about 250 to 500 milliliters per minute. Given the substantial volume of blood involved, specialized access points are established to ensure efficient blood flow for effective filtration. There are four types of dialysis access. The first three are used for hemodialysis, while the fourth type is utilized for peritoneal dialysis. The first type of dialysis access is the arteriovenous fistula, or AVF. This access point is surgically formed by directly connecting an artery to a vein. Due to the higher pressure in arteries, the vein gradually thickens and becomes wider over approximately 6 to 8 weeks, preparing it for dialysis use. The AVF accommodates two needle insertions, one for drawing blood to be filtered and another for returning the clean blood back into the body. The AVF is regarded as the gold standard in the United States, primarily because of its durability with appropriate care. Many fistulas can function effectively for 5 to 10 years, and some have been known to last for 20 years or more. Pre-existing conditions may affect longevity of an AVF, and it is influenced by patients' pre-existing conditions such as cardiovascular issues or diabetes. Access management involves cannulation techniques by rotating cannulation sites, infection prevention by cleaning the access through a septic technique, and limit lifting to 5 to 10 pounds on the access arm to prevent extra strain. If nurses assess any potential issues with the access, a kidney doctor or nephrologist may recommend diagnostic tests or procedures such as an ultrasound or a fistulogram. The second type of access is the arteriovenous graft, or AVG. This works similarly to an AVF, but instead of using your own vein, a synthetic tube connects the artery to the vein. The advantage of an AVG is that it can be used sooner, usually within one to two weeks after surgery, because it doesn't need time to mature like a fistula. However, AVGs are more prone to clotting and they generally don't last as long as fistulas. The third type is the central venous catheter, or CVC. A CVC is a thin, flexible tube placed into a large vein, often in the neck or chest near the heart. A CVC can be used immediately after placement, making it convenient in urgent situations and no needles are needed to dialyze. However, it is the least preferred option because of the high risk of infection. If bacteria enter through the catheter, it can lead to a serious bloodstream infection called septicemia, which is life-threatening. CVC care is crucial, keeping the site clean and dry, avoiding baths and swimming, and ensuring only trained healthcare professionals handle the catheter. Finally, we have the peritoneal dialysis catheter, which is used for peritoneal dialysis or PD. A soft tube is surgically placed in the abdomen, and it allows dialysate to flow in and out of the peritoneal cavity. For the first week after placement, patients are instructed to not change the dressing and a sterile dressing change is usually done at the clinic by a trained PD nurse. The PD catheter can be usually used 48 hours after placement for urgent starts. No needles are also needed to dialyze. The most common complication with PD is peritonitis, an infection of the peritoneum. If this happens frequently, patients may need to switch to hemodialysis. It's important to keep the catheter clean and dry, especially in the first 10 to 14 days. PD is typically done at home, 
so patients and caregivers are trained on how to maintain the catheter. And that's a quick overview of the four types of dialysis access. Each has its pros and cons, and your healthcare team will help determine the best option for you based on your health and dialysis needs. Thank you for watching.